Oh, Al, thank you very much, and thank you for the card. I will carry it with me every day. So, the, uh, well, what a great day. Uh, great to be here. Boy, uh, Signa Thomas is from the great state of Florida, and she did a great job, and I think we all look forward to seeing her on Fox, right? And I got to see uh, Governor Jindal's uh, speech this morning, and he has done a great job, and in, he's a great individual to emulate. He's done a great job. And so, it's also nice to, to know there's, I've been walking around, there's a lot of Floridians here. So thanks all the Floridians for coming. So, well, thanks for the warm welcome. It's great to come to Washington in February uh, to be reminded how great it is to be in sunny Florida in February. But, you know, it's not the weather that makes D.C. different from Florida or Ohio or Wisconsin. Today, states are leading the way governing on conservative principles. And that's very different than Washington, D.C. But you know that, as you are all the bedrock of the conservative movement, you are the individuals who stay true to the core principles of conservatism, and you are the ones who hold our leaders accountable, here in Washington and around the country. Accountability is one of the primary themes of my administration in Florida. In Florida, and one of the key themes of my campaign when I ran for governor, that's because I believe it is critical to success. So in speeches, during press conferences, and just when, just when I'm talking to people, I ask them every day to hold me accountable for delivering on the campaign promises I made, and as governor, to hold me accountable for making the right decisions. There is simply too much at stake to pass the buck to the next generation. Livelihoods are on the line. The American way of life is threatened. How many of you have seen the potential of your job or your business choked, not by competition, but by a government that no longer has any idea how real people live? That's right. By a government that has forgotten that it works for Americans who are fed up with bailouts, tax increases, deficits, unfunded programs, regulation, frivolous lawsuits, and special interest. If you've ever created a job with your own money at risk, if you've ever imagined an idea for a business and bet everything to turn into reality, if you've ever taken satisfaction in bringing about change that help create opportunities for others. If you believe anything is possible in America, then you know exactly what truly matters. These are the experiences and beliefs that propelled our great nation to create hundreds of millions of jobs and build the mightiest economy in the history of the world. And you should also know this, if you have any experience creating real jobs, you have virtually nothing in common with the current occupant of the White House. As Al said, I've been blessed. I've seen the American dream from all sides. I'm, I'm the adopted son of a truck driver, and I started school living in public housing. By the time I was 11, I was serving my schoolmates lunch in the cafeteria and washing their dishes so I could get a hot meal. But even then, in those most difficult times, an 11-year-old boy believed in the American dream. And, and I could sense the promise of this great country. I had then, and I have the certain knowledge now, that with enough hard work and the willingness to get up when we fall, the birthright of every American is to rise above his or her beginnings. I've learned that personal failure should not be an invitation for government bailout. Just as personal success should not be an invitation for a government tax grab. After more than three years of the present administration, it is time to reacquaint ourselves with the notion that, that the freedom to succeed also means the freedom to fail. <laughs> it, 
It's a trade-off that's at the very core of a country founded on the sacred rights of the individual, the liberty of each and every American. It's, gov it's government's role to do what it can to equip everyone to compete and to offer a level playing field for the competitors. But it is not government's role to pick the winners and losers. You know, the policies of our next president will likely decide whether the United States remains the world's largest economy or whether we fall behind China and begin a, begin a slow economic slide to global irrelevance. And thanks to President Obama, China doesn't have to threaten us with missiles to become the dominant economic power. They just have to threaten to cancel our national credit card. The, this borrowing spree cannot last. None of us believe we can run our personal lives in the same manner politicians are running our government. Why do politicians think they can run government with no accountability? It must be the mission of the next president to have the courage to stop this insanity and put America back on the right course. In this next election, the choices could not be clearer or the stakes higher. The issues when I ran for governor in Florida in 2010 were, were not much different from the issues this year. In fact, there is one issue that stands head and shoulders above everything else, creating jobs for Americans. I made that issue the central theme of my campaign, seven steps to 700,000 jobs in seven years. I called it the 777 plan. <laughs> now they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, so you can imagine how flattered I was when Herman Cain surged to the lead behind his 999 plan. <clears throat> I was first. In all seriousness, the seven, my 777 plan is absolutely working in Florida. Unlike the Obama administration, which earned a downgrade in the nation's credit rating for the first time ever in the great state of Florida, the outlook for our credit rating was raised because of our responsible budgeting. For the first time in 20 years, Florida paid down its state debt. As a matter of fact, it's the first time in 20 years we did not in increase our state debt by over a billion dollars each and every year. But that's only the beginning. In my first year in office, unemployment has dropped more than two percentage points, down from 12% to 9.9%, the second largest drop in the nation. We shrank the size of government, we reduced the government payroll, and appointed agency heads who are helping Florida businesses get to work. And guess what? It absolutely works. In one year, Florida businesses crea created over 140,000 jobs, well on the way to meeting my 700,000 goal, job goal in seven years. Thank you. But we didn't, we didn't stop there. My administration eliminated burdensome regulations to make it easier to do business in Florida. And we are poised to get rid of over 1,000 more regulations in 2012. That's right. During my first year in office, we forced state government to do more with less. We balanced a budget while covering a $3.7 billion shortfall. Facing that kind of deficit, I ignored the newspaper columnists and the so-called experts who advised the only way to fix the problem was to raise taxes. No. Most, most of us here know the last thing anyone needs is higher taxes. What our state budget needed was some good old-fashioned belt tightening, forcing our state government to live within its means just like every Florida family. And we bridged that $3.7 billion budget gap, 
and we balanced our state budget without raising any taxes. But we weren't satisfied with just that. The plan I campaigned on called for lower property taxes and a phase out of the business tax. That's right. And, and I was elected to deliver on that promise. And I was not going to wait for the economy to get better before taking action. So last year, I signed into law a tax cut that eliminated taxes for nearly half of Florida's businesses and cut the property taxes by more than $200 million. <clears throat> We did this because we understand it's businesses that create new jobs, not government. It's businesses. It's businesses who have created, the Amer made America the number one economy in the world, not government. That's right. It's businesses who hire individuals who, with their hard work, feed their families, purchase homes, and provide a safe, nurturing environment for their children, not government. Our actions, we're positioning Florida to lead the nation in job creation and economic growth. I won my campaign because Floridians were tired of politicians. They played the, the blame game. They were tired of watching jobs go away and watching housing prices drop. They were tired of asking, who will accept responsibility for making Florida the number one place, the number one place in the world to start and grow a business? They ask, who will hold state government accountable? Who will keep a sharp eye on state spending? Who will help create the number one business environment in the entire world? In my state, that call was answered loudly and clearly. I stood up and I said, I will. As governor, job one for me is helping Floridians get back to work. That's why when the unemployment numbers come out every month, the press doesn't need to, need to ask who should be held accountable. They know I will. They don't have to ask who will make the tough decisions that will balance the budget and hold state government accountable. They know I will. Nobody in Florida wonders who will stand up to defend taxpayers against pork barrel spending. They know I will. And in Florida, nobody wonders who will protect the rights of the unborn or the rights of citizens to own a gun. They know I will, and I will make sure every, all Florida children have an opportunity for a quality education, Floridians have an opportunity for a job, and government does nothing to raise the cost of living in our state. That is what leadership is about. <clears throat> leadership is standing firm in your beliefs and convictions, not swaying in the wind subject to the latest public opinion poll. <clears throat> As you know, Florida, Floridians just voted in the, in the presidential primary. So if you were in Florida, you heard a lot about the, well, I guess nationwide, you heard a lot about the candidates, and as we know, all of them have solid plans for ensuring American businesses are in the best position to succeed so they can hire American workers. While many of, many of you may differ on who your, who your choice is for president, I think there's one thing we can all agree on. Any one of these candidates have a superior plan to turn our economy around and would do a far better job than the current occupant of the White House. That's why I'm excited about our chances this year. We all should be. The American economy is in trouble. The world economy is teetering on the edge of a cliff. We need to remember how this great country was built. Our president wants to grow the federal government. He's called for the creation of a gaggle of new federal agencies. Yet, there is no plan to reduce federal regulation, no plan to balance the federal budget, no plan to cut federal spending, 
no plan to make American companies more competitive in the global marketplace. No plan to fix Social Security. No plan to stop ruining our credit. No plan to give Americans more choice as to how their hard-earned dollars are spent. We all know government should not bail out companies. We all know American companies cannot succeed against foreign competitors if America has higher taxes, more regulation, and more litigation. Against this backdrop, a backdrop, people like you and I look around the country and we ask, who will stop this from happening? Who will stand up and lead America into another generation of prosperity? You will. Who will inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs to build their companies with American workers? We will. That's right. Who will take responsibility for meeting America's economic challenges head on? Who will stand up and be held accountable for protecting job creators and the economic producers of our country? And I'm encouraged by what I see. You and all of our presidential candidates have stood up and said, I will. We have some courageous candidates who are ready to lead. And ladies and gentlemen, you, the folks in this room, must hold all of our candidates from the presidential candidates to state and local races accountable for making America the haven for the individuals to live their version of the American dream. Yeah. That's right. As you know, in less than nine months, the fate of our nation will be decided. The fate of individual rights will be decided the opportunity for American families will be decided. It's up to all of us to do everything in our power to put America back on the path to prosperity. We have to put American businesses in a better position to succeed than businesses in any other country. That is how we will grow jobs in America. We, the conservative leaders of our nation, we are accountable for what happens between now and November. In November, when the political dust settles, let it be us that answer the call of who will take, a, who will take responsibility for America's future. Let each of us say, I will. Thank each of, you for your, each of you for your commitment to make sure every American has the opportunity to live the American dream. And God bless each of you, and God bless this great country. Thank you.